of years were carried on in the folklore of native people and account for the stories of Bigfoot in the forest. Uh, there's, I mean, there's, a, uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think it had something to do with it, but not all of it, okay? An interesting idea that begs a few questions. Did ancient native people understand the idea that an animal could go extinct? Or could they fully grasp just how different the lands of North America were compared to where their ancestors lived thousands of years earlier. To them, since the stories remained the same, there was still a large ape out there somewhere, even though Gigantopithecus may have gone extinct and lived in a land far away. Or is it still among us? Is Gigantopithecus still among us today? I think it's possible. Um, even granting the behavioral adaptations, Gigantopithecus would have had to make uh, accomplish the migration uh, it seems a large creature could go undetected for so long. Mm, don't know about that. Like she said, um, the inner portal things. Who knows? Inner dimension. Then again, as technology improves and the Internet spreads info around the world, it seems more and more apparent that Bigfoot isn't evading detection at all. He sighted just about every state by dozens, if not hundreds of people every year. And those are just accounts of people who are willing to talk about them. As a wise man in a basement office once said, the truth is out there. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> Mulder, you gotta love them. Perhaps an ancient, long-thought extinct ape lurks in the depths of the North American forests. Until science has had the body, as a body, the real story of Bigfoot will be left to speculation theory and rambling internet articles. Is the Bigfoot, so do you think the Bigfoot giganto theory is plausible? Typing giganto. So do you think that uh, theory is plausible? Okay. Um, so those are some of the names for Bigfoot. We're going to ex explore some of them. Um, Let's see, I don't understand how primates live in South America and Central Mexico. Yeah, I don't, yeah, go figure that one. Yeah, you know, it fleetingly crossed my mind. I didn't get back to it. I didn't give it much thought, but it's that's very true. Michelle wants to know how, you know, she doesn't understand how primates live in South America and Central Mexico, but don't live in the U.S., Good answer. Not warm enough? I don't know. There's plenty of warm places. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I don't know. Okay. We uh, explored the Giganto uh, theory. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Yowie for a minute. Uh, is Bigfoot in Australia? What is the Yowie? Of course, if you're from Australia, you probably know the Yowie legend. The Yowie is a massive bipedal ape-like creature. Some say stands up to three meters tall. If you are from North America, this sounds like someone else you're familiar with. <gasps> Mr. Bigfoot, yes. There are more than a few similarities between Bigfoot and the Yowie, and it's easy to suppose they have to be related. After all, we know about Bigfoot's cousin in Asia, the Yeti. It only stands to reason that there must be a population of similar creatures in Australia as well. Why not? Um, however, when we dig a little deeper, we find a little couple problems with this theory. Um, hi, Jenny. How are you? Did you graduate? Are y'all gadgeted, honey? <laughs> K 
Congrats for you if you did. Yay. Yes, Florida, South Texas. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I was thinking, well, not warm enough. But yeah, it is. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that I, I totally agree, Michelle. I don't know. Yay. Um, like Native Americans in North America, um, Aboriginal Australians have a long history replete with the strange tales of a large, hairy, bipedal creature that shared their land. When early colonists arrived, they had their own run-ins with the beast and left their stories behind as well. These legends are compelling and at least give us a starting point. But unfortunately, the Yowie shares one more common, commonality with the North American Sasquatch. Lack of evidence. You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. Congrats. Yay. Um, uh, you know, they keep saying lack of evidence. Okay. Um, I'm not sure there is a lack of it. I just, I, I think I kind of agree with your theory on that, Michelle. Um, interdimensional, real possible. Uh, still, many Australians, along with Bigfoot researchers around the world, have reason to believe there is a Bigfoot-like creature roaming the Australian outback. Is the Yowie connected to creatures like Sasquatch, the Yeti, and other large bipedal apes around the world? Or is it something else entirely? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> In the field of cryptozoology, researchers don't consider creatures like the Yowie or Bigfoot to be magical entities that simply popped up out of nowhere. Uh, they are animals just like any other, and they are subject to all the stuff that Darwin guy was talking about. In other words, they had to evolve into something else, from something else. I'm sorry. They had to evolve from something else. There is no evidence of any prehistoric ape species ever living in Australia. That doesn't mean that it's not, uh, it's not true, that it didn't happen. There is just no evidence of it at this point. Nor is there any in North America. But in the case of similar creatures found in North America, America Asia, and Europe, um, we go back to the Bigfoot giganto theory, which says Bigfoot and creatures like him are descendants of a giant ape called Gigantopithecus blackie. Okay. This extinct orangutan like creature lived in Asia, stood 10 feet tall, and pros probably bipedal. According to the theory, Giganto evolved into what we now call the Yeti or Bigfoot. Some of these beasts stayed in Asia and went on to occupy the Himalayas and remote areas of Asia, while others migrated across the Bering Land Bridge to North America during the last Ice Age. Uh, even though Bigfoot Giganto theory has many holes as a gopher, um, it's a nice story and certainly as plausible as anything else when it comes to Bigfoot. The thing is, Yahweh doesn't fit into this tale at all. If the Yahweh were to have spawned from this Gigantopithecus hypothesis, it still would have needed the way to migrate from Asia to Australia. Now, this is a problem. The Wallace Line is an invincible east-west demarcation barrier that notes the migration limits of animals during the last ice age. Despite the lowered sea levels, animals from Asia never made it to Australia, and animals from Australia never made it to Asia. Therefore, the Yowie could not have originated in Asia, as Bigfoot Giganto theory suggests, and other creatures like Bigfoot and the Yeti have. We know it never would have made it to Australia, because no other animal did. Well, not completely true. There was one creature that busted past the Wallace Line into Australia. The humans. So let's see what they know about the origins of the Yowie. Uh, it could have possible. He could have hidden among something, among the humans coming. Yeah, uh, anything's possible at this point. Some researchers believe human habitation in Australia dates back as far as 75,000 years. That's a long time. And to put it in perspective... This would mean humans reached Australia before they arrived in Europe. Even using a more conservative, conservative estimate of 40,000 years, humans had been in Australia for a long, long time. According to the Aboriginal legend, hairy, man-like creatures were already on the land when their ancestors came to Australia. 
This hairy man was also capable of hunting, using tools, and creating fire. This might sound strange, but even in North America, Bigfoot is said to hunt fairly large game. Yes, it is. Um, cows, uh, sheep, you know, um, and that would suggest some kind of primitive tool um, use at least on the scale of chimpanzees. Eh, I don't know. Bigfoot, Bigfoot definitely doesn't build fires, or at least there is nothing to indicate he could or does. Could the Yowie be something else altogether? Uh, you know, I find that hard to believe. I do. And how do we know? Um, could be, maybe they live in the deep, deep caves in the mountains. Who knows? We would never spot a fire there. Um, some researchers think it's possible Homo sapiens wasn't the first human species to migrate to Australia. We know Homo erectus managed to find his way into Asia long before modern humans existed. Could Homo erectus have paddled to Australia and gained a foothold there as well? This was a tall human species, but adult males only topped around, out around six foot. Uh, far short of the ten foot description of the Yowie. But Homo erectus would have theoretically had thousands of years of evolution in Australia before the Homo sapiens ever showed up. Um, eat more interesting, could an offshoot of Homo erectus evolved to be much larger while in Asia, then migrated. Remember that the Pleistocene epoch was a time of megafauna, and it seems logical that a human species moving out of Africa and relying more on hunting may have grown larger to take down larger prey. Um, there are far-reaching theories supported by almost zero evidence. The main problem is that Homo erectus would have had to regress intellectually to fit the description of Bigfoot. And evolution doesn't seem to work that way. But it seems possible for an ape to have found its way to Australia. What else could explain the Yowie sightings but a species of primitive human who would have been capable of uh, traveling the distances between islands and making it to Australia? Um, there are sightings and evidence of the Yowie. Um, ancient native Australians knew of the Yowie, um, the primitive man that lived along with them on a dangerous continent. When Europeans came to Australia and met the Aboriginal people, they heard tales of this horrific beastie. However, uh, some of the stories could be a bit confusing. The Aboriginal people saw the Yowie as belonging to the dream time, part of their complex set of spiritual beliefs. There seemed to be different creatures here with different sizes and temperaments and going by many different names. Uh, there were man-sized man-like creatures, giant man-like creatures, giant ape-like creatures, and all manners in between. A few similar threads ran through each. Yowies are dangerous, hairy, powerful, possibly preyed upon people as food and best kept away from. But were these creatures myth or something in between? Of course, it didn't take long for Europeans to find out the answer for themselves and start having their own experiences. When the British began to establish their first settlement uh, in the 18th century, they ran into the monster. Throughout the next 200 years, sightings would continue and the stories grew. Uh, of course, some sightings are typical of Sasquatch encounters in North America where the creature is glimpsed briefly before disappearing. In other tales, the Yahweh was said to attack people, vehicles, and even terrorize an entire town. The Yahweh has historically been reported from Queensland to the Northern Territory of the Western Territory, and even on the island of Tasmania. Tasmanian devil. In modern times, the Bigfoot I like Bigfoot. The Yowie boasts uh, a few blurry photos and shaky videos. But is there any real evidence aside from stories, alleged sightings, and images? There are footprint casts, some of them fairly compelling. More bizarre, and therefore even more compelling, are photos of a hand or claw of some kind, which was allegedly severed in a farmer's gate. The people who discovered it tossed it out after nobody could identify it. Okay. Um, so all that remains are the pictures. There's no perspective in the photos, so it's hard to say what this hand or claw may have come from. 
Uh, clearly, the Yowie has the same image problem as Bigfoot, the Yeti, and every other similar creatures. In the eyes of modern science, there just isn't enough to con-